covering 716 square miles of Northern California, Contra Costa County is home to some amazing backroads in the Bay Area. Here are three backroads Bay Area riders should consider exploring that provides great views, test the skills, and just a good time. Pinehurst Road, Moraga, California. Nestled in the foothills between Oakland and Moraga sits Pinehurst Road that stretches for about seven miles starting from the north at the top of Skyline Boulevard and connects to Redwood Road to the south. This tiny yet mighty road is surrounded by a forest of redwood trees that immerses you in the surrounding nature. A special feature of this road is its two miles long section of fast switchbacks and S-turns that'll make any rider feel like they're on a roller coaster. Once you've completed the seven mile stretch of Pinehurst Road, it's usually a great choice for many riders to hook a left onto Redwood Road. This road offers more twists and turns all the way down to Castro Valley. It should be noted that at the time of writing this, a section of Redwood Road after the Anthony Chabot staging area is closed due to recent landslides from past rain events. There is no clear date as to when it will be open for use, but it is still a fun route to explore for many riders visiting the area. Next up on our list, we have the North and South Gate Roads of Mount Diablo Park in Mount Diablo, California. When it comes to scenic routes in Contra Costa County, Mount Diablo's North and South Gate Roads is number one, offering high elevation views, winding roads, and lush nature, making it a great choice for a day trip. So you got a long ways to go still from here to the top, which is nice, like, you know, but while you're here, you could enjoy sceneries like this. So all of that is towards Livermore. Riders can enter the park from the north in Ignacio Valley or from the south in Blackhawk. There is a $10 entrance fee into the park, which is worth the price if you also plan on taking advantage of the many vista points, hiking trails, camping, and picnic areas the park has to offer. This road is an easy cruise though. I will have to say it's probably one of my favorite cruises. Um, you know, as long as like I'm not stuck behind traffic, but you can't help that. Uh, it's really well paved road I think um, it is, it's just really nice up here with all the twists and turns you'll be going through it's good to know that traffic can be slow at times in the areas where cyclists and hikers are present so it's best to take your time and enjoy the views while making your way to the top of the 3800 foot peak oh you know what I would love to actually try camping out here um, I think camping out here would be really cool. I think it'd be really cold, but I think it'd be really cool. Taking either North or South Gate roads will lead you to Summit Road, the primary road that takes you to the top of Mount Diablo's North Peak. All right, I think we made it. There's the, the radio tower right here. All right, I think now it's just a matter of finding parking, which is going to be really tough because there's a lot of people up here, I just realized. We are at the summit, 3,849 feet. Once there, you could get a chance to check out the visitor center and the lighthouse tower that gives guests a 360 degree panoramic view of the Diablo mountain range, where you can see as far south as Mount Hamilton in San Jose to Napa Valley to the north. Next up on our list, we have Morgan Territory Road in Marsh Creek, California. And this one is a personal favorite of mine that I love to ride every weekend. If you love single lane roads with blind corners and tight hairpins, Morgan Territory Road is for you. This road stretches for about 20 miles, winding its way up and over Morgan Territory Regional Preserve, connecting with Marsh Creek Road from the north and North Livermore Boulevard to the south. 
This part of the road is my favorite. It's just being under this canopy of trees is so uh, transformative in my per like. It just feels like I'm like tr like teleporting through like a wormhole right now. <laughs> It's important to note that this road is pretty narrow and demands your attention no matter what pace you are riding. Definitely a lot of traffic coming through here today. One way to ride this road is to obviously try to maintain a side. Um, personally myself, I like to try to use as much road as possible, but knowing that it's a little busy today, uh, probably a lot of people are trying to hike up in the uh, Morgan Territory uh, staging area. Um, it's just one of those things where coming through here, especially around these blind corners, a car can easily take up the entire lane, so you're going to want to prepare to either ride the wall or just stop and let them pass. Being it serves as a primary road for the residents that live on the hill, vehicles traveling on this road can take up the entire lane and can force you to ride the edges of the road or in some cases onto the dirt. However, the same technicality and difficulty makes this road one of the best when it comes to putting your skills as a rider to the test. There is never a dull moment on this road. You will want to focus through each turn, avoiding any potential dangers and target fixating on obstacles that may be on approach. Yeah, I can't imagine driving a car through here. It's just so narrow. But people do it. Riders traveling through Contra Costa County can expect a great time riding through these roads. But be sure to do your due diligence and check for any road closures and road projects that may prevent you or delay you from riding through these beautiful back roads. During the rainy season, these roads are known to flood or be victim to rock and landslides. So if you're a new rider, you might want to consider riding during the spring, summer, or fall seasons, which are the best times to travel through these roads. But if you don't mind a little rain and mud during your winter riding, these roads can be just as rewarding as long as you take your time.